Trencalos team was founded back in 2006 by a group of students from the Escola Superior d'Enginyeria Industrial Aeroespacial i Audiovisual de Terrassa. Its main objective is to design, build and fly unmanned aerial vehicles. The team has been participating in the Air Cargo Challenge competition since its first international edition back in 2007 and hasn't missed an edition since. For this year's competition, the team is participating with an aircraft we have named Ruballon. Regarding the aerodynamic design of Rigolon, multiple configurations have been considered with different airfoil, wingspan, cord and torsion distributions. For each configuration, the propulsive system as well as the aerodynamic behavior have been analyzed. With this information of each individual, the main performances have been analyzed. These main performances are those that directly affect the final score of the aircraft. Maximum payload, maximum level speed and maximal vertical speed. Each individual has also been considered for two possible scenarios with a takeoff distance of 40 meters and a takeoff distance of 60, as these two cases have different treatment in the regulations. Once the result for all cases have been computed, a post-process study has been carried out to compute the score of each individual, considering that all cases participate in the competition. The process has been repeated three times to ensure a configuration close to the optimal. In this video, we are laminating the structure of the wing using the previously prepared molds. Before starting the epoxy mix, it is necessary to check that all the components are ready and they all fit where they have to. It has to be remarked that the conditions were really harsh. We were over 36 degrees and at that temperature not only the physical effect is high, but the epoxy hardens much quicker, so no time can be lost. Once it is done, we mix the epoxy with the hardener and start laminating. The wing is composed of a carbon fiber sandwich. Once the two layers of carbon fiber have been laminated, the spar caps and the flap hinges have to be added. Next, perforated film and breather are added and finally the vacuum bag is set. It is critical that no links are present as the results directly depend on the quality of the vacuum. Once the epoxy is fully cured, the mold can be taken out of the oven and the breather and vacuum bag can be removed. Next, the upper and lower surfaces have to be glued together. To do so, the spark core and some ribs have to be added in order to keep the structural strength of the wing. The main spar of the wing is made out of a composite sandwich made out of carbon fiber, roethel and wood. With the carbon fiber being embedded in the structural scene of the wing during the lamination process and the wood being placed at either side of the raw cell nucleus. Once the upper and lower surface of each wing segment have been joined and glued together, there is some post-process to do. The edges have to be polished to ensure a smooth landing edge and also to ensure that the segments are safe to handle without risks. Then the ailerons have to be set. This includes the preparation of the hinge, preparing the location of the servos, and finally setting up the electronics.
So the electric and electronic system of the plane is actually quite simple. Uh, it consists of two systems, the first one uh, being powered by two main batteries connected in parallel, uh, they are 3S, and they feed directly into the power train. Uh, we have decided not to use the BC integrated in the ESC because it's more unreliable and we have a single signal wire traveling from the ESC to the receiver so we can control thrust. Then uh, the secondary system uh, is the one that we use to power the receiver and the servos in case there, there's a power cut from the main uh, train or uh, any emergency we can still have control of the plane. And as you can see it's a smaller 3S battery that feeds into uh, a BC and this PC has two outputs with step-down voltage. Uh, the first output we use to, um, to power the, the servos on the tail and uh, the, the receiver. And also uh, the other output is the one that controls the servos on the uh, wingtips so we can uh, move the flap runs uh, efficiently. And the, the wires uh, travel through, uh, through the inside carbon rods of the fuselage and through the inside of the wings and go directly into the top of the cargo bay where the receiver and batteries are located. In the first flight, the aircraft is capable of taking off, but dynamic instability is appeared due to back location of the center of gravity. The windy conditions do not help either. Thank you.